Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about if we only knew this sooner, we could live here on Social Security or a small pension. Uh, so we're going to talk about where you could live and how you could live just on Social Security. And 2025, the new numbers are out for what it looks like the average Social Security check is going to be. For a single person, the average is going to be $1,966. And for a couple, both receiving benefits, $3,932. So we're going to go over what you could do on that. And then if you're like us, maybe you're not getting the full benefit. We're not sure what we're going to get yet, but it may not be the full benefit. So maybe, you know, you're only getting $1,500 and maybe you're, you're going by yourself. So what would that look like? So we're going to break that down for you and show you just how exciting a time it is to be able to travel the world on just Social Security. All right, so we're going to take a look at taking that money and uh, heading over to Thailand. What would it look like to live in Thailand on $4,000 a month? So this is uh, for a couple. Um, and we're going to start with housing, but it's, it's always going to be the biggest chunk of your budget is always going to be eaten up for the most part by housing because that is kind of important to spend your money there. Yeah. Um, that's where you're going to be living, sleeping, and you know your daily stuff. So from here, we're going to be looking at about $959 for rent um, and about 200 or so a month for utilities. So a total of around $1,200 for your housing. Now, we're not talking about just, you know, some random place. We're talking about a nice place, a nice building with, a, you know, a gym and a pool, amenities, guards, parking, all kinds of stuff um, that are going to be offered at this, as well as like usually co-working space will be offered in these buildings. So these are not to be taken lightly. That $1,200 is going to get you a really nice place. Yeah, we actually price this out at the building that we normally stay at in Thailand. And we normally rent it on Airbnb. It's a little bit more, uh, but it includes everything. But we looked it up. If you were going to go there for a year and had a, a retirement visa and could stay year round, what you could rent it for if you were going to get a six month lease, this is in the Bangkok Satorn building. And it's by far the best building we've ever been in. It's just amazing. Like we have a private elevator that takes us to our, <laughs> uh, to our apartment. Um, it's I, I can't overemphasize how great the staff is there. There's just so many amazing things about this building. And it's it's state of the art, the pools, the gyms, everything is wonderful. So for twelve hundred dollars a month, basically all in on living expenses, this is a steal. It's right next to the metro line, it's near these amazing malls. It's an amazing place. We're excited to get back there <laughs> soon. But uh, this is the kind of place you would be getting if you're looking at renting something year-round and spending about $1,200, including all your utilities. Absolutely. So the next thing that we need to talk about is food. Um, and this amount is going to include groceries as well as eating out. And um, not just eating out anywhere, but eating out like in a mix of high-end restaurants and also street food or food that you get in the various night markets as well. You're looking at about $1,000 a month uh, to do that. So that's not really cutting into a lot. I know a thousand doesn't sound like a lot in US, but spend a thousand on <laughs> groceries and high-end delivered food or street food or market food and thousand dollars is going to get you some really good stuff yeah this is this is eating well <laughs> uh, this is not <laughs> not uh, pinching pennies on the food this is basically eating whatever you want whenever you want and there's so much amazing food in Bangkok and that's one of the reasons that we love being there so you know this is they have so many great restaurants we go to uh, just it's kind of like a shabu shabu Japanese buffet where you can cook your own meat and do all this and it, it's so reasonable like it's it comes out to 12 13 dollars per person and that's something that would cost 25 30 dollars <laughs> per person back home so you really you really can't compare it it'll blow your mind how cheap the food is but that's going to be food 
Moving on to transportation, we're figuring $100 uh, total for riding the metro system, which is BTS or the MRT there, or getting a grab car. Taxis are so cheap. Uh, we took a grab, which is basically like Uber, from the airport to our apartment. That's the only time I think we ever used it this time. <laughs> and it was about 8 or $9 for a 30-minute ride in a taxi. Yeah, you can't even touch that in the U.S. So. <laughs> yeah, and it's a long ride from the airport. We're talking about 45 minutes to an hour yeah. with little traffic. With a lot of traffic, it's sometimes a lot longer. This cost also includes, when we stay at the Bangkok Saturn, we also use the boat taxis as well. And mm. those are actually less than a dollar just to, to cross to the other side of the river. So that's pretty wild too. Um, I do have a bunch of videos over on Travel Asia with uh, Travel Thailand with Ali um, of all of the different things that you can do. And actually this boat ride is one of the things that I included in there because it just kind of blew my mind how inexpensive it was to take a boat taxi, which was beautiful, a lovely ride across um, the river. But uh, it does include that. The other thing is that we do tend to walk a lot of places because Again, if you pick where you're going to live strategically, you won't have, you'll basically just be riding the public transportation, the MRT or the BTS. You won't have to use the taxis a lot because honestly, the traffic in Bangkok is pretty horrendous. Um, it's very famous for its massive traffic jams, uh, basically at all times. So you don't really want to travel by taxi anyways. Um, the very best ways to move around the city is the BTS and MRT. So always try to find someplace close to that that's going to keep this cost down this low. I mean, $100, um, and that's estimating a little high for moving around the city. And we go someplace almost every day. Health insurance going to be a big factor. So we're a little over 50, and our health insurance is about $240 per month. So just to give you an idea, we put a link in the description of Safety Wing. That's a, it's not where we have our insurance, but it is one that you can quickly go look and see what it would be for you. So it does come out to right around that same range for a lot of people. Um, if you're a little bit older, it'll probably be a little bit more, but you can check that out and see. Uh, that is, you know, insurance, it's, it's a little different than in the States because you don't end up using your insurance a lot <laughs> because everything is so inexpensive as far as healthcare goes. You know, we uh, we have a video on the channel of Ali having major surgery in Malaysia, and we have a five thousand dollar deductible on our policy, even with four days in the hospital, major surgery, CAT scan, CT, doctor visits, X rays. We didn't even get to the five thousand, so uh, <laughs> we never we never met the deductible. So <coughs> excuse me, it's just a different. Different, different thing. You're gonna have to change your, your thinking about what insurance is, you know, like in other countries. Uh, and then next up is gonna be cell phone. Now we use a company called Air Allo, and we spend twenty six dollars a month. That's right. Um, and it's super easy. It's an eSIM, so we're able to keep our US SIM. We still have our US numbers, so we keep that in because. You know, you're inevitably going to need to get like a code or authentication or, you know, make calls or whatever with your U.S. number. And you obviously still want to hang on to that SIM. So we do keep that in our phones and use the eSIMs. And it's perfect because you can set it up before you get there. And the second you land, turn your take your phone off airplane mode and you are good to go. You already have service um, and you can, you know, go ahead and, and text your driver if you've set something up or whatever and start communicating, which is fantastic. So I do have a, a link down in the description for discount for $3. You get $3 off. I get $3. Everybody wins. Um, so that's a great service and we love it for us we think it's the easiest thing to do and um, it's just super helpful. Next up is going to be entertainment uh, and health services. This is going to include massages, <laughs> movies, all that. So I'll let you talk about how much and how many you're going to be getting paid. <laughs> so massages, we usually 
get at least two, sometimes three a week each. Um, and we absolutely love doing that. Massages are incredibly inexpensive in Thailand. And so we, you know, take advantage of that opportunity. I also really like to get facials. They're really inexpensive there as well. We're talking like $15 here and for the massages, around five dollars sometimes less than that depending on what type of massage you're getting um so as you can see that cost is not going to be very high uh so the cost for the uh, the entertainment and health services also going to the movies um is, is included in here as well movie theaters are incredible in in bangkok in thailand they have so many cool ones i mean like beds and couches and living room setups pretty wild and so so cheap including your food your tickets you're you know usually looking at 10 15 bucks um to go to the movies sometimes more depending on again which one you go to but still very affordable and you're looking at about uh 120 dollars um, so for the massages and like a hundred dollars or so for the, for the movies. So you're looking at about $250, uh, for entertainment for the month for two people. And one question we get a lot is about flights and like people say, well, you don't include your flights in the budget, but they're actually in there. Uh, all the flights are included in the budgets we talk about. And the way we're going to do it for this is basically we're going to figure if you're going to be living in Thailand you're going to be flying home uh, to the U.S. once a year to visit people. And a flight for us going home is about, a round trip flight would be about $1,000. Because you got to remember, you can't just put in a random date and take the flight. When you're <laughs> retired, you can go whenever you want. And you're obviously going to pick the cheapest time. So you can scan the entire year and get the best flight. And so we can almost always get that for about $1,000. And so like right now we're looking at flights home and we're just doing one way. It's about $550. It comes out to about a thousand almost every time. So we're just going to prorate that by month. Um, and so a thousand dollar flight for two people is $2,000. We're going to put that as $160 a month cost just to make sure you can go home and come back once per year. So you add all that up and you're coming in at just under three thousand dollars, so that still, if if you're on these, you know, this couple of Social Security, you've got three thousand nine hundred thirty-two to play with. You could still have nine hundred dollars left over per month after doing this, which is just incredible. And honestly, we're not on Social Security yet because we're only in our early fifties, but that is our budget: four thousand dollars per month, and we rarely rarely go over four thousand dollars per month so we know for a fact that it can be done and this could be an amazing lifestyle but what if you are single or you didn't get the full uh, amount for social security what would it look like if you are trying to do this on nineteen hundred dollars per month as a single person you're gonna have to pare back a little bit but there's still amazing places uh so for housing we're going to look at a place that we also stayed at a year ago. It's called the Rhythm Rachata. Uh, it's in Hoi Quang, uh, Thailand. It's Bangkok. It's, it's basically Bangkok. And we stayed there. On our Airbnb, we paid about $600 because you're always going to pay a little more on Airbnb for the month. But if you look this up online right now in the housing websites, you can get an apartment here, a one-bedroom apartment, for $450 per month basically including utilities because uh, it was 350 for the rent and then you'd probably add in 100 for utilities and this place was amazing we actually loved this place we did and it's crazy because this place also had a sky pool with gorgeous views a gym which was one floor just below where the pool was also had incredible views of the city and it had a you know guarded gated building and lots of great little convenience stores little mini grocery stores that you could go to really close by and 
the metro station, the MRT station, was literally right outside the property. You just walked out there. I mean, one day we were walking back, it was pouring rain, and it was like, oh, it's no big deal because the door is just right there. So we just walked in the pouring rain because it barely got wet because it was so close to our building, right from the train to get to, to our apartment. So this place is actually incredible. So you're, you're really not sacrificing a lot, uh, paying less as a single person. I mean, $450 for an incredible building with great amenities. It's secure, it's beautiful, it's clean. You really can't ask for too much more than that. No, it was amazing. I would definitely go back there, even two people. The apartment's plenty big. So uh, food, we're just gonna cut that in half. And $500 a month for cooking and eating out, that's gonna be about what it'll be. And a lot of this is just gonna be cut in half also. Transportation. Uh, $50. Health insurance will also be cut in half. We're going to call that $125 for you. Your cell phone will be $13 cut in half. Entertainment, same thing. You're down to $125 per month. And your flight is going to be just $80 per month prorated for the year instead of the uh, $160 that would be for two people. So you add all that up. And it comes up to $1,343. <laughs> now, if you're getting Social Security of $1,900, you've got $550 a month left over, and you're living an amazing life in Thailand, including your insurance, including your flight, including your housing, your food, everything. This is doable for yeah. most people. Even if you're getting a little bit less benefits, like we think we're going to end up getting, it's, you know, it's doable. Uh, so it's not something that you need to shy away from. Figure out what is going to work for you and understand that there are a ton of opportunities out there for you. Absolutely. And this is, you know, in, in a place where you have so much available to you. Bangkok, Thailand is one of those cities in the world that has just about anything you could possibly want you could get it there you know if you're you know craving food from home easy peasy tons of places western restaurants that you can eat at even american brands even american like fast food restaurants kfc mcdonald's you know taco bell burger king pizza hut domino's you can get all of those things in Bangkok. but then if you want like you know a, a mexican restaurant you can go to a mexican restaurant you know you want a, a, a churrasqueria you can go to you know brazilian steakhouse they've got that argentinian steakhouse they've got that they've got all kinds of stuff um it's absolutely incredible what's available there but what i think is incredible is these numbers mm -hmm. they're way under how much you're even trying to live off of and if you take this and go to even other countries you could do this for even less like say someplace like vietnam you could do this for even less than these numbers this is just we picked a place where it had tons available was easy to get to you know flights in and out of bangkok are very doable and multiples per day usually so it's a great place to kind of base out of in asia yeah one thing i wanted to mention was we get a comment a lot of times like well what what are you going to do when you when your health declines or when you can't do this anymore and the answer to that for a lot of people we've seen it over and over and over is nothing different they're just going to do that stage of life in thailand as well because that is even easier and cheaper than in the u.s to do that you would not believe the number of people that we see in the beach towns in thailand that are going about their day with a home health care worker they hire a, you know a local health care worker to either be live in or check on them or take them around like when you show up to the uh, place where you get your visa renewed, it is littered with 80 year old people in a wheelchair being pushed around by a young Thai woman who is translating and helping them get their visa renewed. And it is, that's just how it works. So you can do what you do in the US, which is like basically when you move into that, I need assistance phase of life. It is even cheaper to do that in places like Colombia and Thailand. We see it all the time where it's just not an issue. Like you're gonna be able to do that 
much more affordably than you would ever be able to get help in the U.S. So uh, people think like there's this end point to this. There does not have to be. You could, and a lot of people do, decide you're just going to live out your days somewhere else because you can afford some greater style of life than you could afford back in the U.S. Absolutely. Guys, I hope that this has been enlightening and helpful to you. If you have questions, leave those down in the comments for us. We did this video for you because you've been asking, you know, what if I don't have a lot of money? These are real numbers um, with from real places that you can actually get for these prices. And we just feel like it would be a, a good use of your social security and small pension um, to use outside of the U.S. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, give us a like if you enjoyed this video and we will see you guys next time.